I recently got a two notes torpedo Captor X. Reason being I was looking at building an ISO box to put a cab in and it just seemed like so much work to build an isolated, effectively a box inside a box to have an amp cabin and a microphone stand. And it can't be completely sealed or symmetrical because standing waves cancel stuff out. There was just so much to do and price wise, I probably could have made it for about 500 quid. I looked at buying some, found a good use one for 800. These are about 500 quid. I thought, you know what? It's probably easier doing that. And I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna do a standard review and go through every kind of, because you get an app with it, which is wicked. One of the reasons I bought this, I saw Anderton's using this and I thought, hmm. And I'm gonna go through, compare how it sounds compared to an SM57 on a cab, and we're gonna to listen to it with their SM57 on it. I'm gonna show you it in a live environment, so my band plays some tracks. I'll show you how it fits in a mix very well, actually. Also the things I do and don't like about it. I did get this at a discount from Two Notes, so I emailed them. I noticed about a year ago they sent a load of free ones out to people, like every YouTube channel on the planet, so I thought, I'll have a bit of that. So I emailed them and I said, you right, mate, can I have a free Captor X? And the dude said, no, but we can send you one for half price. I said, hook me up. He said, I will hook you up. So it arrived, did have to pay, um, obviously, import, because it's from Europe, I say obviously, it might not be obvious. So it didn't actually work out as half price, probably about 25% off but you know, better than nothing. Um, it's an attenuator and it does, it converts your sound. So I plug my amp into it and it turns it into a digital version. So you're gonna hear both. The thing I'd say about the attenuator, I was surprised about. So on the front, it's got like, you can plug headphones into it and it's got knobs for turning things up and down. Wicked. For the attenuator, it doesn't, which I was a bit disappointed by. It's got a switch and there's three levels. So I suppose we should listen to all three levels. I mean, there's loud sort of, room volume, practice volume, and really, really quiet. They're, they're labeled something like gig, pff, small venue, bedroom, or something, I can't remember. Also, I wish this was on the front. I just turned the camera so you can watch the DB meter through this. This is full volume. Mid volume. and quiet, or off pretty much. What I will say about that quiet setting is, it's, this is probably picking up the strings in the room over the sound of that. That's, I mean, you can pretty much not hear it, to be honest. It's good, it's, it's nice having three settings. I just wish it had a, a turny knob. I did buy a Harley Benton attenuator, which had a digital output. The attenuator was all right. The digital output sounded shite. Um, my favorite digital output, so I've used, I used the digital output. We, we rehearsed silently, so I used the digital output on a load of amps. So I've tried that Orange Micro Dark, Black Star HT20, wasn't very good. The Orange Micro Dark is actually quite good. I tried it on every amp. Uh, the Harley Benton attenuator sounded pretty bad. The attenuation was good, the digital output was terrible. The best I've ever heard is the Boss Katana. Um, I will do a bit of a comparison between this and the Katana. I mean, it's a completely different thing, but the digital output on a Katana is brilliant and it has loads more low end. That's one of the downfalls of this. It doesn't really have that much low end and you'll notice that. So when I flick between how it sounds through a mic and how it sounds through this, it is noticeable but that's what I'm gonna show you in a rehearsal setting because that shows you how it'd be live or mixed and it fits well. So even though playing, it doesn't have the low end you get through an amp or through other digital things, it sounds good in a mix. So I would say it's not a problem unless one of you's playing through this and one of you's playing through a katana, which me and my mate Steve did. And I was like, wow, your guitar sounds so much bigger than mine. So that's the only time if there's two guitarists and not both playing through one, it could be a problem. Anyway. Oh, f off. It does lose connection quite often on the app. Uh, and I mean, it's there. It's not far. Come on. We're using the stock setting of what it came with, which is called Heavy Dry 001 preset. I'm not going to go through every cab. You can probably see that on other channels. I, I don't really care. I'm just going to give you an example of how just an SM57 in this pretend world compares to a real 57. Because it's really similar. It doesn't have the low end, but it's still really similar, which I was impressed by. So I'm running um, just clean through a Orange Rocker 15 Terra 
and the reverb is a new neighbor immerse rob recommended that love it absolutely love it i'm going to flick between the two sounds so you can hear how it sounds digitally and in the real world I think it sounds pretty close. What I'm going to do is put the ribbon mic back on, which is on the standard setting. I just think it thickens it out. It brings more of the low end in, um, which I think sounds nicer. Come on, there we go. So the buttons on this are quite small when it's on a phone. So I don't know if I could shrink the picture and make this, but you could probably customize it. I don't know, I haven't done it. One thing I noticed in rehearsals, when you push it, it, it can sometimes not handle it. So that was clean. We're going to go dirty once your mum gets here. Um, I'm going to put some drive on it and then I'm going to boost the drive and it's when you boost it so how I would do we'll hear it through a valve amp and how it, it for a solo it'd be perfect but when it's going through this I don't know if it's because how I've gain staged it but there should be plenty of headroom I don't know if anyone else had this problem listen to it and you'll be able to you'll be able to hear what happens right Here when I boosted it and through the thingy. Just didn't translate as well, I thought. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I just got to gain stage it better. I don't know. For me, I just thought that's the only point I thought it lacked a bit. I'm going to show you a clip from our rehearsal so you can see, even though it has less low end than it would if you whacked a microphone in front of it. I think live probably may be more of a problem, but you've still got your kick drum and your bassist to fill in that area out. But in a mix, it is not a problem. So here's a clip from a recent rehearsal and you don't notice that the low end's missing. just to emphasize how different it sounds to a katana. The reason I say a katana is that it, I just love a katana. It's so easy, you just plug in and it works. And that's a really good DI sound. So you whack a set of headphones in. We run it to the desk. I've actually recorded accidentally because I didn't realize it's going through a katana and wasn't mic'd up. Um, I've accidentally recorded songs we've released through a Boss Katana record output. And it sounds good. So, I mean, it does sound better through an amp, um, it always does, but as a headphone output for something that's not really designed to be recorded that way, I suppose it's called the record out, but let's be honest, you use an amp as an amp in general, not a digital output, not like this, which is designed for it. The Katana sounds great, so I'm going to compare this to a Katana. I know they're completely different. Gives you an idea. In summary, I would definitely recommend one of these. Uh, if I didn't, I would genuinely sell it, but it just saves me building an ISO booth, which would take up a load of space. I was looking at building it in here, but you'd still hear it sort of humming away. So I did clear a space in the other room, got all the materials, and I just thought, you know what? I actually saw Robert Baker, so he's a YouTuber, watched him use a two notes thing, a rack mount thing, and I thought that sounds really good, which is why I looked into the smaller version. If you're recording a song, you want to know how it sounds recorded, not how it sounds in the room, because once you back a microphone in front of it, it doesn't sound quite the same, it changes, so you want to hear that recorded sound. And you can't redo really that when it's, the amp's here, I'm gonna hear that. I know you can play it back, but it's difficult to play it back, move the mic an inch, and mess around like that. But with this, you can do it on an app, so you can hear how it sounds. <laughs> it's just 
easy and lazy, and I don't really have the benefit of having a spare. I mean, I looked at building another room, another building separately, so it's properly isolated for all of this. This is so much cheaper, and it sounds really good. So, in fairness, it didn't just save me a few hundred quid. It probably saved me a lot more time and effort and stress, to be honest. And it's great for rehearsals. It's tiny, seems to work. Um, the attenuator is a bit annoying. I wish it had a knob. They should change that. And I wish it didn't. Dis it always seems to lose connection. If anyone else has got one, leave a comment. Does it lose connection every five minutes? I mean, it's not that often, but it just seems a bit. It shouldn't, in my opinion. Maybe you can plug it in via a USB. It came with a cable. I haven't done that. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.